Thanks, guys. Thanks, mate. Good to be here. Uh, yeah, the sound is a bit, it's a bit different. So uh, if uh, you can't hear me or anything, let me know, because I'm going to be looking down and coding a little bit throughout this. So I'm going to try and see what I can do. Um, OK, so yeah, I'm Justin. I work at uh, MongoDB. Um, and I wanted to show you a little, uh, little tool that we wrote during our last Skunkworks. Um, Skunkworks is, is a little bit like the, you know, Google has 20% time. Skunkworks is the thing that every few months you get together for a few days and do whatever you feel like. Um, and uh, I actually work at a, a part of Mongo called MMS, which is our, like our, our web hosting software. Um, looks like that. A lot of people don't know it exists, but that's what we do, MMS. Um, OK, so uh, can I just, just to start off, uh, just a quick poll of hands of people who've ever used the MongoDB shell. OK, so something like 50-50. OK, so um, if you've never used the shell before, this might be a bit full on, but uh, I apologize because uh, that's what this tool is. Um, so many of you might, have, uh, might be familiar with, in SQL, you have the concept of a view. And a view in SQL is uh, like a virtual uh, table, effectively. Um, it just saves a query, and then you can therefore query it in the future. And at Skunkworks, uh, a couple of my colleagues and I decided that we wanted to do that for, uh, for NoSQL, for Mongo. And this is what we wrote. So um, first off, a couple of little, little bits of pieces with a shell that you might not be aware of. Uh, when you jump in the Mongo shell, um, you're actually running, um, that's V8. That's actually not Node. So you can't use require or any of the stuff that you might like to think you can use. Uh, there's a project at the moment going on to make it Node, but at the moment, it's just a, a regular V8 shell. Um, another thing is that Mongo actually uses this thing called a Mongo RC file that you might not be aware of. Um, the Mongo RC file, it looks in your home directory. So if I look into my if I look at home, if I look for a file called .mongorc, right? I don't have anything. Uh, but what uh, Mongo Views does, if I run it, it's going to copy in a little, uh, a little uh, startup script. And now if I cat the same file, um, and I cat. I've just got a simple loader. Um, now if I go Mongo, you see that I actually have this little uh, startup script has, has kicked in. The reason why I'm showing you this is because I'm going to plug to one more plugin that I really like, uh, written by one of my colleagues that actually does uh, colors in the terminal, and they're pretty useful. So uh, yeah, so if I move a little file that I have already written, this is not necessary at all. This is just so I can get colors. Um, then if I install it again, and now if I run Mongo, I have. I should have some colors. OK, great. So now I have Mongo, I have uh, this little tool, uh, Mongo Views, and I have colors. Um, so let's populate some data. So let's use a new table, uh, a new database. And let me drop in some data. So here's a collection of employees. Right. And now if I go db.employees, I'll find. And you'll see a bunch of uh, employees. So that's the colors that uh, Mongo Hacker brought in the colors. And uh, so far, Mongo Views has done nothing. OK? Um, great. Now, what I can do with uh, Mongo Views is I can actually create a view. So what I do is off the collection I want, so employees, I use this function that now exists called create view. I give it a string of a name, and then I can give it the criteria. In this case, I'm saying I want every uh, employee that is a manager. And I better actually copy it. OK, now I created a view. Now, the one little uh, caveat to using the views um, is that we actually need to use the underscore. So instead of going, um, so if you know I do show collections um, in Mongo, I can see a collection of employees. And um, as you expect, if I do show views, you see managers. Um, if I do db.managers, unfortunately, it doesn't exist because it's not a collection. But if we do this little underscore trick, then now I have the two employees that were uh, also managers. Now, before you think, you say, OK, well, that's not very useful. Well, it's actually, um, it's just a query, right? It's just a virtual query. I can query it. As, it's just a cursor. So I can say, oh, let's go and have a look. Let's sort it by um, reverse order of name, and let's pretty syntax it out. OK? I can do whatever I want with it. Reverse the order. Um, but it's just a view, right? It's just a projection. So if I, do, if I go and insert another user, so I'm, here I am dropping in one more employee. So this one's called Ian, right? Um, if I show you what's in employees, 
right? Now I have John, Paul, Mary, Amy, and Ian. But now my managers, if I try and find the same managers, now Ian's magically appeared. So that's the advantage here, is that if you write queries regularly in the shell, like I do, and you are adding data to it, and you're coming in and out of the shell, you want to be able to actually save it, and then you can want to re-query it. So I could do things like this. I can actually go and query the collection, uh, the virtual collection, as though it's a real collection. So I could say, hey, find me every manager whose name is Paul, sort it, and pretty it. There's Paul. And it's persistent, so I can close it, can restart it, can use employees, and, uh, oh, it wasn't, it was example. There we go. Wrong database. Cool. So that's a pretty simple way. You can write queries, you can persist them, you can query them as again, because they're just cursors. What's nice, actually, is that it was actually quite easy for us to add on the ability to make them nested. So what if I wanted to create a view of views? What if I wanted to say, now I want to see all employees who have a manager flag who also were born before 1990? Well, I can just create a view off the manager's uh, view, which is kind of nice. So I can jump in here. DB managers create views, senior managers, the criteria is date of birth less than 1990, off I go. Uh, now if I look under senior managers, I find I only see Paul and Amy, because the third person, Ian, if we go back up, the person, Ian, that I just added before, was born in 1995, whereas Paul's 83 and Amy was 45. So it's kind of handy. Um, so as I said before, I rewrote a little thing, you can do show views. And there's the views that we have at the moment. Um, you can drop a view, as you'd imagine. So DB, senior managers, the drop. Nice. Um, we can, uh, you know, you can change them if you need. There's another thing, though, that some people don't realize with Mongo is you actually have this concept of a projection. So if I go look into employees and I say I want to find something, and, you know, you'll often say I want to see find, you know, manager is true. Right? I see three people. There's another feature that Mongo has is where you can actually turn on and off. Um, you can whitelist and blacklist um, certain uh, properties. So what I did there was I actually basically whitelisted the name property, the name field. And I can ex explicitly turn things off as well. So all like this, I can basically project what, I, what comes out of my queries. That's a regular feature of Mongo. What we can do in views is we can do the same thing. So I can actually create a view that actually has, already has, uh, I want to, um, I basically want to turn off the ID call. So if I change senior managers now, I say create it, same thing, but right at the end there, you see the ID is zero. So now if I go and find senior managers, right, then, then the underscore ID column is uh, it's out in the projection. It's just a handy little thing when you want to basically clear out data that you don't want to see when you're running quiz queries. Um, it's kind of nice too because you can actually combine them. So if you recall, I just turned off the ID column. Um, I'm going to also blacklist uh, the UID in the manager column here. So if I want to find it, so let's, let's put no query in. So I want to get all senior managers and I want to say, I want to turn off the UID column as well, or the UID property. So it disappears. And maybe I want to turn off date of birth as well. That's kind of nice. Um, and as before, it's a, it's a cursor, so you can do whatever you need to it. So we could limit that, um, we could drop it. We can just do a limit of one, that's all we need. We can sort it first too. We can sort by name, um, let's go name, regular, limit, and there's Amy. Okay, so we got through that um, actually during our hack day, and uh, that was kind of fun, but then we wanted to do something different. So we thought, well, let's try joins, right? You know, the very, everyone finds joins a very, uh, controversial topic. Um, now, just as you uh, would imagine with the views, this is all just something that sits in the shell. This isn't something you can do in the Mongo driver, but it's still kind of useful. There are times when you have one collection and you have a key and you have another collection, you've got the foreign key, you want to uh, connect them. So we thought, well, why don't we add this concept of a, a left in a join? It's actually not too hard. So let me populate some other collection. Let me populate some users. Let me, let me give emails to all these people. So if you recall, uh, employees has this uh, UID property, you can see. And now I just added users. And there they are. When they ha I, uh, you can see that in the users column, I have IDs and I have emails. 
So what if I wanted to join the users and the employees, right? On the, so it's the, um, the key in users is ID, and the foreign key is uh, UID in the employees. Well, you can create another view, and the third argument to create view is actually a join, where you give it a target, which is a collection or another view. You give it a from prop and a to prop. So I can say, hey, for all employees, create this view called employees with email that basically joins it to this other collection. And you can see I don't actually pass it a string. I, I, I literally pass it db.users, which is quite handy. Um, so if I say, go do that join, and then I want to say, hmm, let's have a look at employees with email. It's kind of handy. See, so what we have is we actually have the join, and we, ha we came up with this little structure of the ID where we actually put the two. We made it like a compound key, and we put the two object IDs in there. So if you ever need to go back and find you know, if you want to know what was the actual uh, employee document, what was the user document, you can actually get their object IDs. Um, and then we basically uh, merge the two sets of properties. So we take email, we take UID, we take ID, we take date of birth, and we put them all together. And that's what you get out, which is quite handy. Um, we also, even if you have a naming conflict, we just prepend the name of the, uh, of the collection first. So if they both have UID field, then it would be employees underscore UID and users underscore UID, which is kind of handy. Um, yeah, um, I, I'll show you a little bit about the structure. What actually, um, if I actually show you the uh, API, as it were, what you're actually looking at is something like that. So db dot, either the collection or a view, create view, um, you give it a name, and then you give it a criteria, a projection, and a join. And this is pretty much all uh, MongoViews is, but it's pretty handy. That's all it really takes. Um, under the hood, we're doing a few little uh, sneaky things. Um, the first one, pretty simple, is that we, as you might have seen before when I did slow collections, you see the underscore underscore views. Um, you can't actually do db.views.find because the shell doesn't like you. Um, doesn't like it when you try to do that. Um, but if you do db get collection views, then we can see inside. It's just a Mongo shell thing. So if you ever have the underscore underscore um, of a collection, Mongo shell doesn't like you to just run db dot. Um, so we got around that by using the get collection. Um, and this is kind of how we serialize the views. So every time Mongo div, uh, the shell uh, starts up, it goes and passes these and goes, oh, that's what it is. No problems. And that's how we persist it. Um, actually, on the other side of things, uh, the code itself is pretty straightforward. Um, we actually use Browserify just to concatenate all our um, different requirements. So I have this initialized script. Um, it looks just like regular node. It runs like regular node. The one difference is we have a couple of magical uh, globals that the, no, the, the, uh, the shell has introduced for us. So if you, anyone um, noticed I was running weird things like use, it isn't even really JavaScript. This is like a hack that, um, that we've added into the shell. Um, uh, show collections, these are just little hacks. Um, Mongo also has this, this DB dot. Like, what is that DB? It's clearly not um, a no global. Um, so we take advantage of that, and you know I had to obviously write in. We have a couple of uh, a couple of fancy things in uh, JS hint files, and not have a complaint, such as capital DB, DB collection, and we're just building on uh, the actual script that Mongo uh, Mongo shell actually uh, pre-populates. So it's fairly straightforward. Um, and as I said before, we just concatenate with Browserify. So when you make this, when you install this file, basically all that's happening is um, run npm install. We run a build. If you look in the build. The build basically makes a disk folder and runs Browserify and outputs a, and outputs a um, distributor, this guy. And this is the thing that gets run every time you start Mongos. Um, so that's pretty much it. I um, don't think I have anything else on it. It's a little, uh, it's a little uh, tool that we use, and it's something to just keep track of queries that you do a lot, um, and sometimes you want to do joins. So uh, appreciate your time, and I uh, hope it's useful to you. Thanks very much. Um, well, they're actually, um, sorry, the question was, is there any uh, potential to build it into Mongo? Well, there's actually, um, the idea of joins, is, as I said before, is very controversial. Um, there's interest in getting it into the actual, um, into the DB itself, meaning that you could access with drivers. Um, but in the short term, I think we're more interested in getting the shell uh, in, in Node than we are to try to get in uh, those, these little tools. Matt? With updating the views? Yeah. 
Oh, no, the, so the, uh, the view is literally just a, a stored query. So it just, it just basically, it, what actually happens in the code is we run the query and we just munge together the extra, um, so it's just two JavaScript objects, right? Object one is a query, object two, we put them together and say run that compound query. Yeah, and so when we run it and when, we're, when we do the uh, joins, the trick there is we actually have to do a temporary collection. So the only way to really get a proper cursor off this join table that will be correct is we basically make a temporary collection, put them together, allow you to cursor it. The moment you've ex exhausted your cursor on that temporary collection, we drop it. So. How many what? You can, join it, you can join one at a time, but you can join a collection to another view, right? So you could just keep joining if you really wanted to. Um, it's not something we've really focused on multi-joins, but it's actually not that complex. It's just the usage of data because the temporary collection could be pretty expensive. Yeah. I mean, as much memory as you want to throw at it. Yes. Uh, no, you have to call them from the shell. This is all just basically a, a sort of a, a, an amendment to what the shell scripts do. It's just a little tool, but it's useful if you're in the, in the shell a lot. Yeah, well, it's a larger requirement. Yes. Is Mongo views open source? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Sorry, that's um, it's on the MongoDBJS. Uh, we have this. Uh, we recently uh, created an organization for for the JavaScript libraries because we actually have a lot of them. Um, it's under MongoDBJS. I'm sure Matt can put it up um, on the site later. But if you just go up, you see it's GitHub MongoDB. Um, and you can see under here, we actually have a lot of tools in here. We even have um, uh, a look at, I think the shell's in here. The new shell that they're trying to do. We're trying to actually look at, there's a workspace here for making um, a real node shell for MongoDB. One more question? Um, you, is it, is it only at the moment, they're only read only. Like, if you need to delete, you just have to wipe a view out. You can drop, I didn't show you, but you can pretty much drop a view pretty straight. Um, unfortunately, all we have is, you know, um, I think I did show. Just drop them and replace them. But I mean, it wouldn't be that hard to mutate them. As you can see, they're just serialized. Um, that's all they really are. It's nothing really that difficult to do. Uh, we just didn't get around to it because it wasn't much use case for it. Cool. OK. Thanks, everyone. <laughs>